Okay, hi there, and uh, welcome to a macro video. In this short video, we'll take a look at indirect taxes in the UK. So the UK government raises just under £800 billion a year in taxes. That's about 37% of GDP. Now, the majority of tax comes from three main sources, income tax, national insurance contributions, and VAT, which appears top left in this graphic. And of course, VAT is an indirect tax. And about 10% of total tax revenues come from indirect taxes. This is worth bearing in mind when assessing changes to the UK tax system. So this graphic gives you some good examples of indirect taxes. What are they? Well, an indirect tax is a tax imposed, levied on a producer or a supplier by the government. And examples include the duties on tobacco, beer, cider, wine, spirits, fuel duty, the recently introduced sugar tax, and also, of course, VAT. Carbon taxes, taxes on pollution emissions, can also be considered an indirect tax. So too, of course, import tariffs. Indirect taxes are a way of governments intervening in markets, often with the aim of addressing one or more market failures. And the key point about an indirect tax is that the supplier may be able to pass on some or all of the burden of the tax onto the consumer in the form of a higher price. Or they may choose to absorb the tax by keeping their prices the same and therefore earning a smaller profit margin. So uh, some examples of indirect taxes here, but in particular, uh, get a feel for the amount of money or revenue that the UK government gets from these taxes. VAT, by far the biggest, £130 billion plus per year. But fuel duty brings in a lot of money, nearly £600 million a week. Tobacco taxes uh, moving up towards £10 billion a year. Beer and cider duty, air passenger, du uh, passenger duty on airfares, gambling duties, and of course, uh, indirect taxes in the property market, including stamp duty, quite sizable revenues there. This chart is important, uh, just to give a bit of context, indirect taxes as a whole take in about 10.5% 10, 10 of GDP per year. That's below personal income taxes, but it's clearly the second main block, if you like, or cluster of tax revenues. Corporate taxes bring in only about 3% of GDP for the government. It's important when you get a question on indirect taxes to be able to use an analysis diagram. So an indirect tax is a tax that increases the supply costs faced by producers. And the amount of the tax is always shown by the vertical distance between the two supply curves, shown here as a parallel shift. Uh, in other words, there is a specific tax per unit. Well, because of the tax, producers can't supply as much at each price level. So therefore, there is an inward shift of the supply curve. And that will cause a contraction of demand, but of course, crucially, the impact of a tax depends on the price elasticity of demand. In this case, demand has been drawn as price elastic, whereby most of the tax is absorbed by the supplier and only a relatively small proportion is passed on to the consumer. That's shown in green. Uh, contrast that with this diagram, where the elasticity of demand is lower, the coefficient of elasticity is less than one. And in this case, the same tax uh, causes an increase in price to P2, but most of the tax in this instance is paid by the consumer. These two diagrams show the effect of a specific tax, a set tax per unit. There is, of course, an ad valorem tax. VAT is a good example, a percentage tax. And uh, this is the key diagram to draw for an ad valorem tax. As the price goes up, the amount charged in tax also goes up because of course 20% of £100 is not as much as 20% of £2,000. VAT is the biggest single indirect tax in the UK. The standard rate is 20%. Uh, that went up uh, from 17.5% a few years back now. There is a reduced, a lower rate of 5% applied to things like fuel bills, sanitary products for women, children's car seats, contraceptives. There's a big debate at the moment about when the government will bring in zero VAT on women's sanitary products. 
there's no VAT on food, new buildings, bus fares, books, magazines and children's clothing and prescription drugs at the moment. There's no VAT on that. And one or two other items are exempt from VAT, including rent. At the moment, school fees, again, a debate there, NHS charges, postal stamps, burial and cremation charges. Uh, you only pay uh, VAT, your small traders only pay VAT if they're below the annual turnover limit for VAT registration, which I think at the moment is £85,000 per year. So those small traders may not pay any VAT uh, at all in that, uh, in that situation. So just to finish with this, I want to take a little look at this question about whether indirect taxes are regressive. Uh, the richest 20% of households pay a lot in indirect tax. They pay uh, over £12,000 in indirect tax per year. The poorest pay 4600 For the bottom quintile, that's 27% of the disposable income. Whereas for the richest quintile, the richest 20%, it's 14%. So in that sense, when measured relative to household incomes... Indirect taxes are judged as regressive. In other words, the burden falls more heavily on low-income households. However, when you measure it relative to spending, uh, it's less regressive. But this does show that the bottom quintile of households typically pay a higher percentage of their disposable income in indirect taxes compared to the top quintiles. So in that sense, indirect taxes are regressive, and that's a key evaluation point to put in an essay. There we go, a quick look at indirect taxes.